Little. Should we fight? It's just naturally good. Henry. Brendan. Oh, mate, have I got a killer topic for you today. Uh, I want to chat about good wine accessories to have because I've been sort of bombarded with questions before about people that are getting into wine and they're wondering, all right, well, now I've got my wine. What do I do next? How can yep. I sort of like yep. ample this stuff up? First and foremost, glassware. It's yes. A, it's an obvious one. So yeah. what what's, uh, what's good glassware for you, to you? Well, for me, I look for uh, something that is actually lightweight. I think there's, yeah. there's uh, a, a bit more of an appreciation of the wine, especially when it is in lightweight glass. I'm looking for crystal glassware. I'm looking for, for glassware that doesn't actually have anything visually that would prevent me from actually being able to see and appreciate the look of the wine. I'm not looking for brown glass or, yeah. or like blue glass yeah, or something yeah. with like a kind of cool fleck in it. It just kind of, for me, takes away from the experience, which I think, you know, I'm, I'm focusing on the wine. Yep. I personally prefer stemmed glassware for some wines and non-stemmed for others. Yeah, like tumblers and tumblers with pet yeah. nap. Totally, yeah, hundred percent. Where, where, like, you know, fun wine and fine wine. Like, I don't want to be heating up the wine like you are. Yeah. You know, but when it comes to pet nap, kind of don't. Yeah, exactly. Bother me, right. Um, but stemmed glassware for me is, you know, the, the the thing I think that when you're getting into wine for the first time, definitely invest in some good stems. Yeah. Um, now, typically you will find like a predominance of a couple of companies that are actually pretty pretty good at making glassware. Rydell being, you know, a preeminent one. Uh, Plum, which is an Australian, uh, you know, producer. Spiegel yeah. Lau is another one. Schott's Wiesel, I should say, uh, is another really great one. So typically they tend to be Austrian or like German manufacturers of glass, but I would I would look to personally per glass stem mm. spend the same amount that I would on a bottle of wine. Ooh, wow! So like what yeah. thirty dollars uh, thirty dollars a glass? Yeah, yeah, I know, and that freaks people out when they're like, man, but you're buying a thirty dollar bottle of wine, and and it's gone within like you know an hour or two. Yeah. But this thing stays with you now. If as you start to invest in you know more high quality wines, hundred dollar bottles, two hundred dollar bottles. Some of these, like Zaltos, for example, they could be hundreds of dollars for gloves, but you pick them up and there is something visceral, dude. Like you pick them up and they feel completely different. I now want to do a video where we have you blindfolded tasting wine out of different glasses at different price points. Lucky, write that down. All right, cool. <laughs> so we've got glassware. What got do we glassware. Need next? So uh, one of the other sort of more obvious ones is actually a way to open up bottles of wine with a cork in it. Yeah. Um, so this is a typical waiter's friend. Yeah. This is the one that I personally prefer because you can get some real, real fancy ones. Yeah. Um, like there's the the Co 38s, which are like five, six hundred bucks each. They're a good uh, Australian made. Yeah. High end Soms wine knife. Um, uh, honestly, a little pull tap. Pull tap is the the company. They. Um, uh, there's also like rip-off companies in these, but they always fall apart. These seem to be almost like indestructible. Yeah. And cheap, like they're not that expensive. So this is one that we obviously have branded up for our own winery. But the fun thing with a pull tap, two-stage pull tap, uh, is the ability for us to be able to, I won't do it on that bottle. Uh, we've shown this on uh, the shorts before as well. Like if you don't know how to open up a bottle of wine, then you know, it's actually pretty simple. And this thing actually makes it even simpler. You know what I can't stand? Uh, they've got a little tube on them yeah. and their arms come up. <laughs> I hate those. I don't, I've opened so many bottles of them and I've still got no idea how they work. When you go to like your mate's place and they pull out one of those, and you're like, oh dear, oh, hey, what are we yeah, gonna do no. here? I've had a terrible experience with that once where someone was trying to use that wine opener, the, the, the little jumping jack. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, to open up some uh, champagne. <laughs> oh, for fuck's sake. It didn't end well. This little stage sort of comes in here, you kind of pinch it there, and that comes all the way up. Obviously, it's not taking the cork all the way out. No, so then you use your teeth. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> so from there, you just come up, and pull up to the second stage, and then pull that up. And that means that basically, you're not kind of bending and frying the cork, yeah. trying to do it in one smooth motion. So it, it's pretty, they're better for like a little bit older corks. Corks can be a little bit friable, but real simple uh, piece of kit. Um, for crown seals as well, you've got sort of pet gnats or things that are still sealed with crown seal, which is very rare yeah. these days. Beers often, are, you know. And you've got your little knife cans. on the back there for the, fil uh, for the foils and stuff on top. Uh, there are really dumb ones out there that we've seen. Um, like here's a, like an electric. A pepper grinder. A pepper grinder <laughs> electric one that's up and down. We have used these before. Um, uh, look, the only sort of circumstance that I can see this being properly useful is actually if you're elderly. Yeah, if you've got diminished use of your hands or something like that, 100%. That makes sense, but outside of that, you don't need one of these. Um, now, hot tip though, for people that are really, really like into their wines, this fucking thing. 
I've seen these used, but I don't know how they work. We just because we couldn't sell it, we're just going to open them all in the show. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I know what I'm drinking. Tonight. <laughs> Fuck yeah! So the the trick here, what this actually does is you're able to insert this, these two prongs, into the bottleneck here, down the side of the cork, and that's going to compress the cork a little bit. Now this might be a bit tougher. This, I might not be able to deal with this. This is a fresh cork. Fresh cork. So usually you want to see you know stuff that's been in a bottle for a year or two, but we're going to give it a go anyway. So you kind of like you kind of wedge in that one side, almost like it's cutting yeah, down yeah, the side. Yeah. Now as soon as you kind of get to that second stage here, okay, we're going to wedge that in and then you kind of go on this little, a oh, little bit more, little journey just wiggling it back and forth, back and forth like this, back and forth, back and Ooh, forth. I it crack. And then you should be able to twist and pull the cork out, hopefully not making a mess. So this is really good for old corks that if you just put one of these down through the middle of, you would just rip the guts out of it and you'd end up with crumbly cork all through your yeah. wine. Whereas this holds it yeah. together a little bit better. And as you're demonstrating, it's not good for young bottles of wine. No, no, no because the, the, the corks obviously have got a lot of stability still like left in it. As soon yeah. as that sort of side comes out, that, yeah. There you go. And then you can use your teeth from there if you really want to. Yeah, pirate shit. <laughs> We yeah, we don't have dental here at Unico, so I wouldn't recommend <laughs> using your teeth. Really, really handy thing to have if you find yourself encountering sort of old, old bottles, and actually kind of like hard to find them. Actually, yeah, of stocking these for Unico, like buying a whole bunch of them, especially for Australian viewers, because they said they're kind of like they're kind of hard I've to looked, find. I've looked to buy one before and haven't been able to mm. in the past. So if we start stocking them at work, that's yeah. great. Invaluable little tool. Next thing that would uh, be of benefit, I think, um, because really at, at that point, you have a way to buy wine, drink wine, open wine. You're pretty set. You're pretty, You're pretty set. set. Decanting wine, decanting yeah. wine. Now this, we've got, uh, this is our COVID decanter. Yeah. Uh, we did a bit of a trial run of decanters that we could that we purchased on AliExpress. We used to showcase really that you can kind of use anything to decant. Like people invest a lot of money in really nice crystal decanters. But that's more of just like the aesthetic. Yeah, I don't, they don't really uh, change anything sort of inherent about no. the wine, uh, to be fair. Um, and there are other ways that you can sort of achieve a similar thing. So the, the whole point of decanting is, is multifaceted. One of those is just to simply get the wine off the sediment. Yep. Get a bit of air into the wine. So it sort yep. of rushes something that kind of naturally happens in the glass anyway. Like if something's, you know, we've encountered farty wines before. Um, you can use decanting aeration to kind of blow off a lot of those aromas that you don't like. Yeah. Um, this, I mean, yeah. This is definitely not a Rydell decanter. <laughs> no, but it will work. But it will work. It's now, the same thing. Um, but this, this thing here is actually a pretty cool Ooh, uh, piece of tech. Not really needed, but it is kind of like a cool piece of tech for people that kind of get into wine for the first time. So what this does is um, you can do decanting with this. You can get like a little filter that sits in here that captures sediment. Cool. Um, but effectively, it pulls down... Oh, that. Um, it pulls down uh, wine and it kind of goes through this bowl, through this hole, yeah. but as it pulls through, it's pulling in air from these two little side things. It's called the Venturi effect. And so here, if I pull this in. Fun. Yeah, and it, aer <laughs> it aerates the wine at, a, at a, a very sort of, I guess, a precise amount of aeration. Now, whether that precise amount is too much or not enough, you know, you could be kind of like ruining your wine, you could be benefiting your wine. So, I personally don't use Holy shit. Yeah, Holy shit. Holy shit. Actually, actually smells incredible so, compared to that. Definitely not something that is mandatory because you can achieve the same thing by learning how to swirl and you don't need to buy these nah. things that are often like pretty expensive. But also. This, this, So I want to showcase the last one. Now this, there, at, at that point, I'm really starting to draw the line and kind of go, guys, like most of these wine accessories simply aren't really needed unless you're like super niche, like like a, a professional song. Like, or yeah, of course. Wine condoms, of course, which yeah. you can buy. <laughs> don't buy wine condoms. Uh, but this last one is a really interesting piece of tech that I actually do find that it has an actual applicable use in yep. the industry. And that's this thing here. Ah, oh, yes. The that's this thing here, the Coravin. Um, amazing piece of tech. Um, that none of us saw coming. Um, no. And we're actually got an interview with the, the founder uh, of Coravin coming up, which I'm really excited for because the, the whole ethos behind this company is also equally fascinating. It does something spe for, for wine sealed under cork and now they have screw cap variants here that you've got this uh, needle. needle, you know, uh, here simply uh, inserts through the cork. Bending oh, a bit, oh, mate. Oh, 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 that's oh, bending oh, a bit, oh, mate. No, no. There it is. There we go. Uh, and then uses argon, which is a, a neutral gas, to pressurise the bottle and replace or displace the oxygen that is inside the bottle. 
um, uh, and, and displaces the wine, which runs through this needle that allows us to be able to uh, effectively access the, the wine that is in the bottle, still sealed by cork. Yeah. And that means that, especially if you're an investor in, in sort of quite, you know, hectic bottles and, you know, expensive bottles of wine, you can almost view your wine cellar as a bit of a library. Yeah. You know, that you can duck in of, you know, grab a glass, see how something's going, you know, see how it's it's developing and maturing, especially if you've got like, you know, four or five of the same, you know, bottle yeah, of wine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, see how they're maturing to see, you know, determine whether or not you should be opening them sooner rather than later. You've got a lot of experience with this with, you know, a father with a lot of grange. Yeah, that, I'm literally buying dad one. I'm currently, I'm waiting for mine to get shipped to me at the moment. I'm going to give it to dad. So it's basically, you know, I'm giving dad a present, but the present is I get to come to your house and drink Grange whenever I want now because we're not opening it. It's still there. But these wines are like, you know, it's fascinating what um, the ability for us to, you know, smell that. That's been um, uh, up here, Coravind, probably for, well, you would have Coravind that for our sort of Like table. a year and a half ago? Yeah. Yeah. Like a year and a half because ago. Because they, you can Coravind a wine and it'll, they advertise it lasting as like two to three years, which is really cool. It is fantastic. What we have noticed is that because you are now removing the oxygen from the bottle, it's still displacing hot. it. Yeah, it's good wine. It's still fine. Replacing it with a noble gas. That means that the wines potentially we don't really have a lot of science on this at the moment. Um, but largely, it's believed that the wine stops maturing or even maturing as quickly as it usually would. Which also, if you're options. drinking 98, 1983 grain, stopping it maturing after that 40 year window is probably a good time to do it. Exactly right. Exactly right. <laughs> There's a lot of people that love to take advantage of wine people. Yeah. Because wine's one of those things that, hey man, if you're prepared to spend four or five hundred bucks on fermented grape juice, yeah. then hey, like we can like here's a good one actually. I've got one for you back here. Have you seen these things before, mate? Premium wine card. This, this is an example of a scam. But... What are you talking about, man? The premium wine card is a revolution in wine technology. It says it right here on the box. All right, well, let's open it up and have a gander at it because you'll see what I mean by how easily wine people can be can be scammed because this is actually a company that still exists today. You can actually buy these things. All right, so I've got a metal card that says premium wine card. Enjoy tasting, enjoy better tasting wine in seconds. And I'm member 649. So read the instructions on the back of this card. Hold the wine glass symbol against the bowl of the wine glass to bring the flavor out as you pour the so you do that yeah so we've got another one here we yeah could, we could you could hold it against here yeah i'm sure it'll work and then if i pour this out right oh yep cool now you've got two a control sample and now you've got your your, your treated wine sorry i've got to gently rub the wine glass at the wine level for about 15 seconds to get the flavor to really enhance out of this premium wine card all right that feels about 15 seconds now you switch them around, I'll close my eyes and I'll cool. tell you which one's the premium cool. one. Alright, good to go. Cool, alright. Smells like Magic 38, which is a delicious wine to begin it's a with. Fantastic wine. This one smells a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah, we've got two glasses of the same wine there, is what we've got. So do you think it's worth paying $50? $50? <laughs> <laughs> But mate, those are the accessories that if you're a die-hard fan, they're the only ones that you really need. Maybe a polishing cloth as well, but it's not really sort of mandatory. For me, I think order of importance, number one, get yourself a waiter's friend. Because ultimately you can drink wine out of a mug. Like you can do it, but you, can you, do it. you need that, number one. Number two, I'd be going with some nice glassware just because that really, it does make the experience a lot nicer. Like I've, dr I've drunk a lot of wine out of those little tasting glasses, mm. which you just can't mm. get your nose in, mm. you don't get the experience. So get a nice big bulb. Then buy yourself a fire extinguisher. <laughs> <laughs> but the Coravin, the Coravin is really cool. If you've got expensive wine and you've got wine that you want to drink over a long period of time, I cannot recommend them highly enough. They are such a cool bit of kit that really does sort of, it turns one bottle of wine into five or six different nights of that bottle of wine. And if you don't have the money for the, the, the big sort of high end stuff, we've actually found that this has done really, really well in our testing, the Coravin Pivot. Yeah. Uh, we held a wine under the Coravin Pivot for 10 weeks. Yeah. And we're like, pretty good, pretty yeah. good. You can actually, we'll link uh, up, and you can actually jump and see the video where we actually put our palates to the test and drink a wine after we've left it just completely open for 10 weeks. One sealed with the Coravin Pivot for 10 weeks and one sealed with uh, the Big Daddy Coravin uh, for 10 weeks just to see how each compared. Yeah, and this only advertises keeping wine fresh for four weeks. We forgot about it and then did it after 10 weeks and it was still pretty good. It was pretty good. Still I wouldn't drink it. Anyway, this thank you so much for 
running through some of these with us. My pleasure. I've just realised that Coravan's not sponsoring this. We shouldn't have said so many nice things about them. Coravan, <laughs> sponsor us, please. Anyway, ciao, ciao. Ciao. <laughs>